So without much ado, let's put our hands together for Joy in Jofo and Shay on their Good morning. My name is Joy Jofo. I was in Jofo Hazard for a young man. Anyway, our topic is biology and lessons from an unrepentant shamaholic. So before we start, I'm going to introduce, or rather, try and define the word biology. You may think it's not a word, but it's actually a word. It's actually a dictionary. So, I'm going to break it down a bit. We all know the meaning of, but we have the word biology, right? not biology, biology. What we all do is for. Who knows who said the word? <laughs> biology, biology rather, means the study of something, the subject matter, what she decides to study. So biology obviously means studying of the human body. So if we were to define it logically, hello? Okay, right. Anyway, if we were to define it logically, biology would mean the study of buying, or rather, the urge to consume, the study of the urge to consume, why do people buy? So they that's what they are, the definition. So I'm going to call Shay right now. <laughs> Alright, my name is, um, as you all know, Shay, I'm a definitely very humble guy. Alright, um, for the purpose of our topic, on repentance of body, well, yeah, maybe I used to be an repentance of body, but now I'm, I'm repentant, so, okay. I'm such a body now, right, so, um, a shapali, people, they, they, what, who are they really, who is a shapali? A shopaholic is someone that that buys things at impulse, alright? He or she doesn't really think about the consequences of his actions or what he's buying. He doesn't care about the price, he doesn't care about um, where he's buying it, who is he buying it for. He just loves buying. The, the moment he sees or hears about a new product in the market, he's very happy. You know, it's as if, uh, you know, when, when the guy is toasting the girl and the girl starts blushing, that's how they feel you get when you buy a new product. You feel as if, you know, you feel like you've gotten something that you've been wanting for a very long time. Alright, um, I'm going to play a video now. This is a movie that most of us might have seen. Um, so, again, please, the first video. How to tell if you are a shopaholic. Are you one of the 17 million people who have never met an item you didn't want to buy? You might be a shopaholic. You will need self-evaluation and honesty. Step 1. Evaluate why you shop. Valid reasons you need food or clothes. Bad reasons you're bored, stressed, depressed, or just got your paycheck. Step 2. Think about how shopping makes you feel. If buying something new gives you an incredible rush followed by horrible guilt, you might have a problem. Step 3. Look around your home. Are most of the items in it things you needed? or stuff you wanted. Step four, check out your closets. A shopaholic's wardrobe is filled with clothes that still have their tags and shoes that have never seen the light of day. If you're on a first name basis with all the UPS guys or can name every pitch person on the shopping network, you may have some spending issues. Step five, examine your conscience. Do you find yourself trying to justify purchases to yourself and others? Do you ever hide packages? lie about how much you've spent? Have you ever snuck a new garment into the house in a dry cleaner bag to conceal you'd bought something new? Step 6. Assess your willpower. Shopaholics find themselves unable to resist buying things even when they know their credit cards are maxed out. Step 7. Get help if you failed our little test. Cut up the credit cards. Find fun ways to fill your time that don't involve buying anything. Join Debtors Anonymous or get therapy to discover the deeper issues behind your compulsive spending. Did you know Marie Antoinette, Mary Todd Lincoln, Jackie Kennedy, and Princess Diana are all believed to have been shopaholics? How do you know if you're a shopaholic? And we're gonna do this exercise now. I'm gonna call, okay, let me trace this one. I need buttons, yes before I start calling people, all right? Because now I have to call themselves now. People's eyes are not looking at me again. It's a way. So I need like, how many ones do we need? Yeah, I need like four. Yeah, I need four people. Four people. I will call names. Right. 
Oh, you want five? Okay. Five people. I'll call names and you'll come out. Bishola. Yes, Thank you. What do you want me to do? Come on, let's go. No copying on me. All right. Um, as much as we are not outside, I, I want us to listen to this question because it actually do relate to each and every one of us. It's, it's part of our daily life. We tend to do these things without even knowing. So what happens is I'll call the question, all right, and you just show them your answer. And Joy will take marks so over. I don't think they will find out where you belong, whether you are a shop already, whether you're just in between, or whether you're a shop at all. <laughs> so, we'll find the very first question is this. Um, do you often ha um, have trouble uh, saving for something that you need? <laughs> All right. The second question. Do you often run your account with minimum balance? Never. Some people should please be honest with ourselves. Alright, fine. Alright, when you go shopping, do you come up with things that you didn't plan to buy? Ah, uh, sure. Uh, 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 Sorry, sorry. 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 Your total score is 25. That means you're safe. Lola, your total score is 20. Please be careful. You're heading down that path. She, your total score is 22. You're over safe. You're going to anger me. I do. You're the best person. So sad. Your total score is 29. You got the highest. In English, <laughs> All right. No problem. I, I, I think wait, there's a bit of irony here because um, you look at from at their personalities and their roles and what they do. You see that first class is supposed to be or is a financial controller, but he actually has a tendency to shop more than other people. So it might surprise you. You might think because he is an accountant, he's very prudent and. But when he's actually spending his own money, he spends his money more often than we all, we all do. Alright, um, I'll briefly um, run through the type of shopping that we have. We want to know how we got scored. Yes, sure yes. We want to know how we got scored. Yes. Okay. If you scored for, um, if your option was never, you that's two points. If your option was often, that's five points. If your option was sometimes, that's three points. So if you recall, Mr. Fester had a lot of often. So that's why he's close to me. No, it was never. 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 She had one never. Um, all right. Um, we we also discovered that there are actually different type of shopaholics. All right. Um, the first the first type are the heavy spenders, the big spenders. These people have money to spend. So you will be deceiving yourself if you want to spend like they do. We don't have that purchasing power that they do. They are heavy spenders. So. That's why you may be surprised that HLR wasn't um, high. Maybe because she's an heavy spender. So at the end of the day, she's not running any risk of running her account to be more balanced because she has enough money to actually spend and buy more than I can do. All right. So, so she's an heavy spender. We also have um, the collectors. And the collectors are people that they just want to pick a color of every item that they have. 
So if I'm buying a shoe, I want to have pink, blue, black, red, orange, purple, whatever the color may be. If I'm buying socks, it has to have, it has to go with my tie, it has to go with my, with my brooch, you know. And if I'm buying a shoe, it has to go with my belt. So they're picking colors of every item. It's just like collecting items. Those kind of people who go to their wardrobes, their price tags has become products they bought two or three years ago. The shoes they bought have never been seen outside before. I have a couple of them too. Um, we also have the bargainers, and this is where my dear Joy falls into. The bargainers only buy when things are on sale. So, <laughs> if, so if things are if things are if things are on sale, they don't they don't they don't mind whether they give it or not. They just go to supermarkets and they see sales. They're so happy. They just believe that oh, it's on sale. I must buy it. And to them, they think they are cheating the. The, the, the shop or something, the cost is on sales and the price, but that there's that actually that a that reason that why that it's on sales. We'll, we'll go to that once we turn in our in our presentation. But the bargainers actually, the, sorry, the, yeah, the bargainers, they actually just buy things that are on sale. So if they're driving past and they see sales, they will pack and they want to buy the cost is on sales. Finally, we buy those that just buy what they need. Those are people that they don't. They actually plan before they buy. They buy things that they just need. They don't just buy things that um, they're not impulsive buyers. All right. They buy what they need to. I'm going to the shop. I want to buy um, groceries. I want to buy clothes. Whatever. Just buy what they need. All right. So I'll call Joy to come and talk to us about the reasons why people actually do shop. Thank you. There's the emotional buying motives and there's the rational buying motives. People people buy emotional falls under people that you're probably sick. You just got out of a breakup. You're hungry. You just see food, I buy. You don't think about it. You don't really use your head to think. You're just, I want to buy. I'm hungry. I'm going for a party tomorrow. I need to buy. Not, you don't need it, but you just want, 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 want. But the rational thinker that could actually sit down and think things through. I will not buy a new thing every month. I'll check what has my closet and then buy. Because I'm buying insurance and I'm going to buy a bag and go to this. You actually just sit down and think about it. Then, for patronage buying reasons, it now falls under this store is close to my house. I'm going to buy from there. Or there are things that are six ninety nine and in short price things are seven ninety nine. So you, uh, there are emotional reasons towards it too. You can either say because you're, it's convenient for you, it's close to your house, and what or not. But then the rational reasons that you actually do look at the prices and you see the variance in prices that you know yes. If I go to the game, it favors me more, favors my budget more. Or if I go to shop price, I'm just going to spend probably two naira excessively and what was more. So these are the reasons why we buy. Generally, reasons why some of us buy just because we are bored. We just want to go and buy something. We don't need it. You're hungry. You're sad. Share your boss needs to buy that. There's new iPhone 6. I need to buy iPhone 6. My children are at home. My brother has this. My brother has that too. Those are basic reasons why you guys so I can't share now to focus on. I'm going to give some examples of things that we actually think that we do regularly, alright. Now, for someone like me, alright, I I won't lie. I have actually bought something because I want to impress a lady. That's the reason to buy. Okay? You you believe that uh, this girl she actually likes guys that wear um, LV, Gucci and all those things and you feel that the only way you can actually get them is actually when you buy those things, you know. And the truth is, these things, the reason why you bought it was not because you needed it at that moment in time, but because you felt that if she saw you wearing that particular product, she's going to agree for you. I don't know what you would do after that. But my point is, it's a reason to buy. And what I do, media basically, um, traditional media, press, TV, radio. But it was not beyond the, the time where you just place an advert in, in press or a, a jingle on radio. Now you have to be target specific. You need to you need to now do things in a way that you get people at the right time, they are in the right mood. Because sometimes you might you might run the commercial and I'm in the wrong mood and like really. But the truth is, when you are actually um, passing these messages at the right moment in time, you get people to actually want to buy. You're trying to get influencing them to buy your product. Media should already be a bad thing. It's not an awful thing. 
There are people that constantly pray for Shaka Mami. Junior prayers are people like Shaka Mami. People like Shaka Mami lose their jobs. People like Shaka Mami lose their ATM. So being a Shaka Mami isn't a bad thing. There are categories of Shaka Mami. You may fall into either category. But I pray we all fall into the big standards in Jesus' name. Just for being a Shaka Mami is not a bad thing.